How's it going guys? My name is Jared Ace and welcome back to Money Met Aish. Today we're going to go over a few questions that will give you much better insight, better questions to ask when you ask questions about investing. So, before we get started, please remember that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is a blank cup. Blank cups. Put your logo on my cup. And hit the thumbs up, subscribe down below, and ring the bell to be notified every time we upload new videos. So, let's get into it. One of my favorite parts of running Money Met Aish is that I get to speak to people every single day about how to take better control of their financial well-being and their future selves. I also get asked questions every single day and it truly is the part that I enjoy the most about running Money Met H. I get to speak to people about a topic that I really am passionate about and I really enjoy talking about. But one of the most frequently asked questions of all the frequently asked questions I get and the one that makes me want to rip my hair out if I had hair the most is what stock should I buy? Please, please don't ask anybody what stock you should buy. It fills me with an anger that burns with the brightness of a thousand suns. People often get angry and aggressive and swear at me online when I don't tell them exactly what stock to buy. They want me to just give them a name where they don't have to do any more research and they can just chuck their money at it without doing any research at all. And there are a few reasons why I plain, flat out refuse. Number one, I am not, like I always say, I am not a financial advisor. I am legally not able to give you financial advice or tell you where you should be putting your money. So if I tell you to buy Amazon, there might be a reason why I think Amazon is a good investment. You might not share that reason. I might have a target price in mind for Amazon where I am feeling comfortable that that is a good place for me to sell. You might not know that. You might hold on to Amazon far too long. You might sell it far too short. And then you want to come after me with pitchforks. Please don't come after me with pitchforks. Please, I'm, I don't like gardening. No pitchfork zone. Number two, people have different goals. They have different dreams, different priorities, and different objectives. There are no two people on earth that are exactly the same. Even identical twins want different things out of life. So it is impossible for somebody to tell another person what the best stock for them to buy is. Like I said, the best stock for me could be Altria with its really high dividend yield, but it's not going to work for someone who is interested in, say, Sharia banking. Altria does not form part of an Islamic portfolio. You cannot invest in sin stocks. So. The best investment for me might not be the best investment for somebody else. You cannot say what is a good investment for somebody else without knowing a lot of information about that person. You definitely can't do it just by getting a message on Instagram or Facebook. So please stop asking people what stocks you should buy. The best you're going to get is a meme stock that someone is undoubtedly just trying to get you to buy into so the share price goes up and they can leave with a profit. And number three, another reason why we flat out refuse to answer that question is because we firmly believe in the adage that you give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, you teach a man to fish and he will eat for his lifetime. Both Mrs. Met Aish and I are teachers. We teach for a living. So we are much more comfortable giving you the tools to go and find exactly what companies work for you. To find that investment which is going to do the best 
for you, your goals, and your priorities. We are firm fish teachers. We're not here to give away fish. Also, I'm highly allergic to fish, so I actually, it's not a great, we're not doing anything with fish, because, yeah, it, it'll kill me. But, allergies aside, we would much rather teach you to fish than give you one fish. So now that we've gone over the biggest, most annoying question of what not to ask, let's have a look at two questions that if you ask these instead, will open you up to getting far more meaningful answers from people who might be more knowledgeable than you, be that on platforms like Facebook or Reddit or even on Instagram. Number one, you can ask, how can I take better control of my finances. Finances and financial education is something we do not get at school. And it is something that a lot of families, I would say upwards of 90%, are not comfortable talking about. So when you're not being spoken to about finances, it is no wonder you don't know how to engage about speaking about finances. It is something that we really need to change. We need to destigmatize talking about money. If somebody comes to you and tells you that they earn 50,000 Rand a month, that does not automatically mean that that person knows what they are doing with their money. They could be earning 50,000 Rand a month and still be struggling for money because they don't know how to take care of that money. Income is really not the be-all and end-all. A far bigger indicator of how you will do financially is how much you spend. If you live within your means, you can have a far better chance. This question will change your mindset from a victim mentality to a control mentality. And your mindset and your emotions play a huge role in how you will perform financially. Emotions should be left as far away from money as possible. And I know it is not easy for most people to be logical. We all get emotional. We all do silly things when we get emotional, like buying 5,000 Rand pairs of jeans because we think that it's going to impress someone. Bob, we don't even like Bob, but, you know, maybe Bob will comment on my jeans. Screw you, Bob. We don't care what you think. You might not be able to control what happens to you, but you have full control over how you react and respond to adversity. So this question will take your thinking and change it more to a control mentality. How can you control your money instead of your money controlling you? But, and this comes with a, with a big but, it will require you to do a lot of introspection, do some self-evaluation, and it requires you to be honest with yourself. If you know that you cannot go without your cup of coffee every day, blank cups, put your logo on my cup, budget for that coffee. We need to also change our thinking about budgets. Budgets are not restrictive. Budgets are freeing. If you do a budget and you know that this rand goes to that, and this rand can be spent on this, and this rand goes towards my beer, this is my beer budget, it frees you to know that this money is serving its purpose. This money is doing its job, even if that job is buying you beer. Budgets are freeing. They allow you to spend on what this is meant to be spent on without worrying about where the next whatever is going to come from. But that doesn't mean that you can go out and just blow money at Truwoods. Screw you, Truwoods. We're not spending any more money at you. In fact, we actually cut up all our Truwoods cards and Fashinis cards the other day. It was very freeing. Oh, <sighs> that's a very nice feeling. But it requires you to do a lot of introspection, to be honest with yourself. And that is something that most of us, having never been brought up in an environment where we hear conversations about money, where we're having conversations about money, 
That is something that we are taught is not something we can do or something that we should just ignore completely and it will fix itself. It doesn't. It never does. Money problems need to be tackled head on. You need to take that bull, grab it by the horns and just ride that thing out. Okay? Ignoring it and playing ostrich is only going to get you hit by a bull. So the first question you can ask is how can you take better control of your finances? And this goes to all income earners, every level. You can be earning a million rand a month and spending a million and one rand a month and broke. Number two, what should I look for when I am starting to invest in ETFs or in single stocks, especially on Easy Equities boards or Facebook groups or subreddits, you will find this little acronym, D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. This has two effects on people. Number one, it makes you feel hella smug and very intelligent when you tell somebody to do their own research. You're kind of being a little bit of an asshole. Yes, it's true. Everybody should do their own research. But it's kind of like telling someone to go find a purple elephant if they've never seen an elephant and they don't know what purple is. It's like telling people go and find me a yellow watermelon. They do exist, but if you don't know that watermelons come in yellow, you could be looking forever. You think this person is talking out of their... Yeah, to you. So it doesn't help just telling someone to do their own research if you don't guide them on how. It has the effect of embarrassing and demoralizing beginner investors when all they get is DYR. Do your own research. Ha ha ha, these people just buy these stocks and don't do their own research. Yes, I, it, it's wrong. It's, they shouldn't do it. But if you don't know, you don't know. That's like laughing at somebody who is drunk and trying to walk the wrong way up an escalator. You're just being an asshole. Help the person out. Okay? If you see someone drunk and trying to walk up a down escalator, it's not going to harm you. It's not going to take a lot of effort from you to just put them on the right one. Just telling people, do your own research, doesn't help. It makes you feel like you shouldn't be investing. And that's not what we want. We want as many people invested in the stock market as possible, particularly in the JSE, we need more people to put their money into the market. The size of the market cap of the JSE has shrunk so much in the last couple of years. It's less that it has a lower market cap than Tehran and they've got sanctions coming out the wazoo. When you're beginning and you're starting out there is so much information that you need to take in that you really just need to read. So don't stop asking questions. Please continue to ask questions. Just know that the better quality your questions are, the better quality your answers are also going to be. And they're going to be far more helpful. Remember, investing is not the only important thing when it comes to financial freedom. You need a full, holistic view of your finances to reach that goal. So, with that all being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. Keep asking better questions. Remember to hit the thumbs up, subscribe down below, and ring the bell to be notified every time we upload new videos. You can also follow MoneyMetAish on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere where MoneyMetAishes are. Remember, blank cups. Put your logo on my cup. Thank you for watching and good night.